Okay, so uh, once we define the, the index function and uh, to know how to calculate the index of a point um, relative to a closed path, now we can state the culture integral formula for in a convex open state. And uh, uh, this formula, of course, um, based on the Cauchy's integral theorem uh, in a convex open set, right? So, so omega uh, is a convex open set, right? In the convex plane, and uh, gamma, okay, is a closed path. In omega, okay, uh, which means that uh, the image is contained in omega, okay. And uh, we let f right is in so so that the f uh, is an analytic function. Defined on omega, i.e., uh, f is in the the space of all holomorphic functions defined on omega. All right. So now, if uh, z is a point in the uh, convex open set, and uh, z is not in the image of the cross curve, right? Then, then when we evaluate, when we evaluate uh, such a function, okay, such a function, right. so this is the line integral, okay? The line integral, um, and around uh, this cross path, right? and the integrand uh, is the is the ratio, okay, um, where the numerator is the analytic fu function, okay, on omega, and so so of course it is the um, analytic functions at every point uh, along the cross path, right? And the denominator is, the, uh, is a linear factor, so it's, a, it's a psi minus a z, okay? All right, so, so that uh, in, this, in the line, uh, when we integrate the line integral, uh, it is required that the point z should not be on the cross curve, right? Otherwise, uh, there is a point on the cross curve when we when we do the integration along uh, the cross curve. Then then the denominator becomes to be zero, uh, which is not allowed. Okay. So so this is so if we want to evaluate uh, such an integral, and we find that the value of this integral is actually f of z. Very surprising, right? So actually, it's f of z. And uh, times the index of the point z relative around with respect to the cross curve gamma. Okay, so so that uh, so this is a, a, a really surprising result. Okay, so the evaluation so sometimes the evaluation. Uh, becomes to be tedious, uh, if not impossible, right? But but uh, this uh, theorem tells us that uh, um, actually the value of this line to go uh, is, is indeed uh, okay. The the value of this analytic function f at the point z, and uh, multiply with the the one in number of z about the. Uh, along the the the, the curve gamma, yeah.
Okay. So, so that uh, this is a, a very uh, useful. Right. And so, so now another version of uh, of the um, Cauchy's integral formula is for um, for simply connected domain. Okay. So now I will state that Cauchy's integral formula. Okay, in a simply connected domain. All right, so now omega is a simply connected domain. Okay. All right, and the gamma is uh, now we require gamma is a simple closed path. Okay, simple so closed path. Because that uh, uh, we extend uh, from the convex open set to simply connected domain. Because convex open set is a special kind of uh, simply connected domain. Okay, so semi-connected domain uh, is a wider class than uh, the set of the than the class of convex open set. All right, and so so the the, the cross pass uh, allowed to be simple. Right, in here the cross pass is arbitrary, may not be simple. And which moves? All right. So the direction of the simple cross path is uh, this which moves counter clockwise. Okay. And the uh, F is an. Okay. It's an analytic function. On the simply uh, connect set means that uh, f is in the in this space. Okay, and uh, z is a point. Okay, so a point. Uh, a point. Uh, in omega, but but not uh, not uh, on the simple cross pass. Okay. All right. So if if z is enclosed, okay. So if z is enclosed by gamma star, then, then f of z um, okay, then f of z is equal to over, over 2 pi i Gamma, eta, okay. right? And uh, if not, if not enclosed by gamma star, right? If not. Uh, and then we have zero. Okay. And 
This is one way to state the theorem. Actually, um, we can combine these two together. So, so this the conclusion actually is equivalent to saying that uh, uh, Fz times index of gamma of z is equal to 2 pi i. Okay. The reason is that uh, because gamma is a simple cross path in the simply connected domain, right? So it so suppose so this is our simply connected domain. And uh, the path, the path is a simple. So this is all right, so gamma is a simple cross path. Means that uh, uh, this path cannot contact right with itself, right? So it's, it's this way. Okay. Now, now the index, the index of a point in omega, except point uh, on the cross path. So the if uh, here, if z is here, then the index is must be zero. Okay, must be zero because it is outside, right, of the curve. And uh, if z is here, then the index must be equal to one. Okay, our theorem. Now, uh, theorem 14.3.b, okay? So we have taken the uh, theorem. So, the, the so you can see that the, the, the outbound is zero, but inside is one. No other choices, okay? And so, so you can see that uh, this formula is is the same as uh, this is statement, because if z is enclosed by by the gamma star, means that z is a point inside here, then the index is one, right? So this is one, and uh, this is the case, because the the index is one. But if not, if z is not enclosed by gamma star, then then the index of z with respect to gamma, it's zero. So this is this is zero, right? Zero times Fz is zero here. Okay. okay. So so you can compare the theorem to see that uh, if omega is just a convex open site, then the then gamma can be any cross pass, right? Maybe simple, may not be simple. Okay? So gamma gamma can be uh, in a, a wider class. Okay. And we have this this formula. But if omega is extended to simply connected domain, then gamma uh, is a simple cross pass. Okay, with that. So we have only two, and uh, and uh, and we we have the same uh, formula here. Okay, so this is called the uh, Cauchy's integral formula. It's the same formula, and because the index, the index of a point uh, is either zero or one. Okay, so we have uh, these two cases here. Any questions? All right, and uh, I admit the proof, yeah, because that uh, we are reaching to the end of the semester. I have uh, two chapters to go, so so I just state the theorem and explain the statements. Uh, and if, if you have any questions, 
you, you may ask. Otherwise, you have to go home to self-study the proofs. Okay. I, 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 I wrote uh, detailed proofs for you in the lecture notes. So any questions? Okay. And uh, now, they are, we have talked about Cauchy's integral theorems as well as Cauchy integral formulas, right, in a local version, okay? And uh, at the end of the, this chapter, I will state the global theorem, okay? So we will state a theorem which is good for any open set, on any open set, not necessarily only simply connected, okay? Just for any open set, and uh, basically any cross space, okay? Any cross space, all right. But the proof uh, is a little bit involved, so and it need uh, uh, some some results in the next uh, in next section. Right about a derivative of uh, analytic functions. Okay? So now, okay, and um, in chapter, I think in chapter 13, okay, when we talk about the um, uh, Riemann-Cauchy equations, uh, we have mentioned that uh, um, if we have an analytic function, then this analytic, this function has ends all the derivatives for all n. Okay, so that we are going to prove this fact in this section. All right. So, so I will say that. Okay, so first of all, uh, suppose uh, um, so D D uh, uh, simply connect right a simply connected domain. Okay, and. Uh, F is an analytic function on this is simply simply connected domain. Okay, and the zero zero a point in in the Simply connect domain D. Gamma, a simple, a simple cross path, a simple crossed path. Okay, in D. That moves counter. Clockwise. Okay, and uh, in cross, this is zero. Okay, so the situation is here. Okay, we have a, a simply connected domain, and we have uh, a path. Gamma star, which is simple, and uh, we have a point z zero, all right, and uh, all right, and uh, uh, the orientation of the simple cross path is counterclockwise here, and it incurs a point z zero here. 
Okay, so this is the geometrical situation. And the f is an analytic function on the simply connect domain. Okay, now the setting up is this way because we were using the theorem, the Cauchy's integral formula in a simply connect domain. Okay, so we are going to 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 show this one. Then, then, first of all, then, then that, uh, then uh, the derivative of f at z z zero because it's analytical already, right? So that this. Is Now the the denominator becomes the square of this linear factor. You see here, okay, right? Because f is analytic, so f is differentiable at every point, okay. And uh, for z zero in here, now this this derivative. All right, this is derivative. Okay, all right, can be expressed as a line integral here. And uh, furthermore, we can then furthermore the second derivative. All right, uh, two to factorial two pi i also can be. Calculated uh, by using the uh, line integral here, right? But this time the denominator is the the cubic of the linear factor. Okay, and uh, in general, the nth derivative exists, and the can be can be computed. M plus one. Okay. Oh. Oh, by the way, uh the the theorem has been stated in the textbook. So, all right, it's three point one. Okay. So as I said before, uh, if a theorem, uh, if we have a, a a quite similar theorem textbook, then I will use the the same uh, theorem number. Yeah, even though maybe the content. Of the the statement of the theorem, maybe a different, a little bit different from that in the textbook, uh, because sometimes I I I usually extend the result, okay, uh, as possible as we can, All right? But but I will retain the sequence of the the theorem uh, number. So um, right, so. So the proof uh, actually use uh, Cauchy integral formula, right? In a simply Connected, uh, you know, simply connected domain. Okay. Uh, 
and please see the detail of even in the lecture notes. So the proof is long, yeah. It will take uh, two and a half pages. So <laughs> if I if I come if I finish if I finish the proof, then 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 it will be beyond uh, the class hour. Okay. So okay. So that um, but I just mention as I say that because we are using. The Cauchy's integral formula in a simply connected domain. So you can see that the premises of the theorem is the same as the premises uh, in uh, this theorem. Okay. Okay. But that's 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 fine. Why? That's fine because that uh, it's quite easy, right? If you you want to uh, you want to establish such a uh, a, a formula, then for every point, for every point, suppose that the point here, if z0 is here, right? It's easy, right, to find a simple cross space to encross it. Okay? It's easy. Okay. So that, uh, so you. And then use this curve, this simple uh, cross pass uh, to to form uh, the cauchy formula here. Okay. So the remark is here. So theorem 14.4.1 indicate that an analytic function an analytic function An analytic function, right? On an open set. Okay. An analytic function on open set. Okay. On an open set. Not necessarily. Uh, Simply connected, okay. On an open set, has n derivative. Right. On an open set. Has n derivative. On omega or O n, okay. Why? Because that uh, okay. So this is an open set. And uh, you pick up, you pick up a point, right? Arbitrary point. So you pick up an arbitrary point here. Say this is zero in omega. Okay. And because omega is open, so there is the neighborhood, okay, of z zero, right? Which 
is in Omega. Okay, so you have an o a neighborhood. So a neighborhood is a disk. All right. So you have a zero R ah, here. Okay, it's in, and this one is contained in Omega. And this one is a simply connected domain, right? Any open disk is a simply connected domain. And then in this simply connected domain, you can find a simple cross path. Why? You just find a, 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 a circle, right? It's to encourage it. Okay, so this is gamma star, and uh, gamma is a simple closed, simple closed path in the disk. Okay, in the disk, which Encrust, encrust zero. Okay. All right. Encrust zero, and so then you can apply theorem fourteen point four point one because that uh, because that then uh, then you have uh, then the Then F n of Z zero exists, which is two pi i n vectorial um, F of Z and uh, Z minus Z zero to the n plus one's power and D Z. Okay, so exist. And uh, can be calculated uh, by using this line integral. Okay, so which shows that uh, um, at every point zero, z zero in the open state, uh, it has n derivative for O n. So, so that uh, with even though the theorem we state uh, is only for simply connect domain. And uh, gamma is a simple cross path, right? We can extend to say that uh, if f of z is an analytic function on an arbitrary open set, arbitrary open set. So for here, this open set is multi-connected, right? It's not simply connected because it has two holes here, so it's a threefold connected. And uh, even though so um, it has n derivative for O n. Okay. Any questions? Okay, and so this is discussion. Give us the theorem here. Okay, omega is an open set. Okay, now if f is an analytic on omega, then f prime. Then its derivative also is in here. So if f is analytic on an open set, then its derivative is also analytic. Means that its derivative is differentiable, right? In here. So so we have f double prime. And because f prime is in here, so f double prime is in here, etc. Right? So by induction f of n is in, so this is implies that 
So by induction, right, f of n is in okay. So the, the the discussion, the proof just is it in the discussion. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, we will for later use the, the following the following uh, estimate of the nth derivative. Right, of an analytic function is uh, quite useful. Okay. So let me state that, which is co called the Cauchy inequality theorem, fourteen point four point b. Cauchy inequality, right? So if f is in an open disk, right? So if f is analytic on an open disk with center A, radius big R, and uh, if we know that uh, this compass function is bounded for all Z in the open disk. Okay, if this is the case, then, then the size, okay, then the magnitude of the nth derivative of f at uh, point A can be upper bounded by n factorial times the upper bound m and uh, n, okay? For n equal to 1, 2, etc. So the evaluation is by using here, all right? So it, this is the, this is situation. Okay, so A is here, and uh, we have uh, okay. And the radius is big R. Okay. So this is the disk. And the F is analytical, right, on this open disk, and it has an upper bound. Now, now to apply the theorem 14.4.1, so we, we enclose A by a circle, right? Okay, and this is circle has a radius. Uh, we say is little r here. Okay, so we have, and uh, the r is from this one to c. Okay, but uh, to the open disk. All right, with gamma t equal to a plus r e i to pi t. Okay, so the 
the simple cross path uh, is this function. Is this function here? So we know r prime t is equal to i two pi r e i two pi t. Okay, the derivative with respect to t would be i two pi r e i two pi t here. Okay, so so as we know. So from so by theorem fourteen point four point one, uh, we know m factorial two pi i here, and this f of z here, and the z minus a m plus one, and the d z here. Okay? And this is, is 2 pi here. And f of z, z minus a, m plus 1, dz. With, okay? Right? With the arc length here. This is the upper bound. So the integral and uh, the differential, now we use the absolute value of things that the arc length, the arc length. So we have upper bounded by this one. All right, and uh, n vectorial. Now f of z has an upper bound, right? So it's m here and 2 pi. And from 0 to 1, and z minus a, so so you can see that uh, so that uh, so you can see r t minus a is equal to uh, two pi t here. Okay, so now um, it's uh, r e i two pi t, absolute value, n plus 1, and the differential becomes to i 2 pi r e i 2 pi t and the dt. Okay. Now this one thinks dz is equal to gamma prime t and the dt. Okay? This is the differential arc dense. Mm -hmm. So we have that. And uh, okay, so now um, if we um, if we cancel two pi two pi here and the r, okay, so that this is n factorial m. Okay, and uh, this is r because this, the absolute value of the exponential. This is one, right? So this is r. This is r. So you get uh, uh, n's power, okay? Dt here, and so this is n vectorial. It's power, and this is uh, okay. So that uh, so the upper bound here. Okay, for all r less than m, r. Okay, so the the r is less than bigger r. Okay, because you the the simple cross curve should be in this open cross disk. Okay, is that okay? So this is true for all little r less than big r here. And uh, by lating Little r go to big R. Okay? So we have. Uh, so now the. will be less than 
R equal to N factorial and uh, Rn. Okay, so we have upper bar. Okay, so this is this bar. Of course, the bond uh, is not good for big n, right? Because when n is very big, because for example, if n is much bigger than big R, then the upper bound becomes to infinity. Okay? Becomes to infinity. Okay? Right. But for, for small n or for, for intermediate n, uh, uh, this is would be a good upper bar. Any questions? Okay, now, now I will state a couple of interesting theorem. So it's called the Liouville theorem. Which says that every every bounded entire function is constant. Entire function uh, is an analytic function on the whole compass plane, right? So, for example, exponential function, okay? So, exponential function is a, an example of entire function. So, and uh, and uh, if, uh, if we know an entire function is bounded, bounded, okay? Uh, the, the magnitude of its function value is upper bounded by some fixed constant, say, m, just like uh, here, bounded, okay? Then such a function should be a constant. Okay, so which says that? Uh, so this is every non-constant entire function is unbounded. Okay. Unbounded means that you can't, you cannot uh, find uh, a constant m such as f of z has magnitude less than or equal to this constant m. Okay, this is impossible if uh, if the entire function is not constant. Okay, so this is called the Liouville uh, theorem, a very interesting theorem. Okay, and. Uh, this is an application of okay. So this is application of uh, Cauchy's inequality. Okay. So you will see the proof here, and uh, but here I want to. Uh, a convex, a converse of Cauchy's integral theorem is as follows. Okay, which is called uh, Morella's theorem.
Moreira's theorem. Okay, so if if f of z, um, right, so I say that omega is an open set. Okay, and the f is the continuous function. All right, continuous complex function on the open set omega, such that, such that, uh, this line integral is zero for all closed triangle. That are contained in omega. Okay, so we we assume that uh, that um, um, oh I forgot <laughs> equal to zero. That we have a Cauchy's integral theorem. Okay, so this is zero for all for all closed, right? So so for all closed because in in section two, um, we have a Cauchy's integral theorem for triangle, right? For triangle. Now, for triangle, if uh, f is analytical um, in an open state, except one point, okay, except one point, and but should be continuous at that point. Right? And here is that uh, f is a continuous complex function such that uh, this formula, this is true, that uh, this line integral always is zero when we integrate along the three sides of a closed triangle, all right, in the open set. Okay? And uh, if this is the case, then, very interesting, F is analytical on H. So, Morita theorem is very important because this is a way, is a way to justify whether a compass function is analytical, all right, on an open set or not. And you can see, so it's a kind of a converse of the Cauchy's integral theorem for triangle. Okay, so this is a, a very important uh, theorem to go. Okay. All right, so I stop here.